as a Christian, you need to be sowing the seed. You need to be letting your light shine. You need to be telling others. But what does it all mean and how is it done? Welcome to the Gospel Message radio program. My name is Wes Hepner, and we want to go through those and more today as we go further in Mark chapter 4, our text from verse 21 through 25. Last week, we had the parable of the sower, how Jesus talks about his word going out through his people and the different kind of ground it lands on. On the hard ground, which is a picture of the hard heart. On the rocky ground, which is the picture of the shallow heart. On the thorny, weedy ground, which is a picture of the divided heart. And the good ground, where the seed is received. It takes root, the plant grows, and it bears fruit. This week, a little more about the sower, and this time a picture of a lamp or candle, and how it is to shine, and how everything will be brought into light at one time or another. And the idea of how we measure, measure ourselves, measure others, how hard are we on others, that it comes back to us. And then a really interesting sentence in verse 25, which I hope you're excited to learn about. So, today, Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 25, before we go into that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this time on this radio program. I pray that you would bless each listener. I pray that you would encourage them in their spiritual walk, that they can really let their light shine and be an example to those around them. Jesus, I pray that you would guide and lead this program, that it would be to your honor and to your glory, and that each word that is said would be an encouragement to those listening. Lord, I pray if there's anyone listening that's discouraged or depressed today, I pray that you would lift them up, that you would shower them with your love and encourage them today to go on. Maybe it's just one step at a time. Thank you, Jesus, again, for everything you have done for us. Your death on the cross made salvation complete for us. Thank you for being with us today, and thank you for preparing a place for us in eternity. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So right to our text, Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 25, and it says, And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. So we start out with this picture of this candle, of this light, right after the parable of the sower. And often if we take this verse alone, we think of it as a Christian should be a light. A Christian should be sowing the seed. A Christian should tell others. And I believe that's 100% a Bible truth. The ground does not matter if it does not get the seed. Whether it's hard and rocky, shallow, full of weeds, or good ground. Without the sower sowing the seeds, there will be no healthy plants growing in the ground. No fruit will be produced. And so this shows us the importance for us as Christians, children of God, that we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with those around us, our family, our friends, our co-workers, everyone who will hear and listen. Romans 10 verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So this is definitely one part of this teaching. Maybe the most obvious part. The second part of this picture of the candle has to do with what Jesus has just shared and what he's about to share in these parables. In our text from last week, we read that Jesus explains a truth to his disciples about parables. In verse 11 and 12 in Mark chapter 4, he says to them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they might see and not perceive, and hearing they might hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. The truth is this. 
You have to follow Jesus to be able to understand his teaching. Not all who hear the story will understand it. Parables are not just an earthly story with a heavenly lesson. They're an earthly story with a valuable lesson that you have to dig for, that you have to pray for, that God's Spirit has to explain to you. Jesus kind of explains this in another parable when he talks about this pearl of great price in Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and 46, where he says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This truth of these parables is like this pearl of great price. To know this truth, you will have to search, you will have to dig, you will have to pray, and you will have to have the Spirit teach you. And it's so valuable once you find it, you'll leave all to be able to hold on to this truth and have it for yourself. Back to our text. Jesus explains this between his parable that he wants people to know the truth and that the truth should be shining as a candle, that it will come out because it's so valuable. But we also have to understand that many in this time did not understand the truth of the parables. And Jesus did want them to understand. Verse 22 and 23 of our text. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. For any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus says there will come a day when these parables that are hard to understand that you don't understand, will be totally clear. The truth will be open. Remember here, Jesus is just talking to his disciples, not a huge crowd. He's explaining this to his disciples, wanting them to understand, but also explaining that there will come a day that these truths will be open to everyone who believes, everyone who has the Spirit of God living in them and teaching them. See, Jesus knew after his death and resurrection that the Holy Spirit would be sent, as the Bible says in John 14, verse 26, to teach us all things and to help us to remember all things that Jesus said. See, this verse about nothing being hidden that will not be open is often used alone in a way to support the idea that your sin will find you out. Nothing you do in secret will stay in secret. And although this is a biblical idea, I don't think this is actually what Jesus was talking about in this moment to his disciples. See, when we read the Bible, it's important that we study who is writing, to who he is writing, what time he's writing, and what's happening in history at this time. We call that the context. One of the most powerful things you can do with your Bible, if you don't understand a verse, is to read the verse before and after it, and also look at the writer of the book, and then pray that the Holy Spirit will teach you. Here Jesus is teaching his disciples. He has just told a parable and now tells them that whatever is hidden now will be open later. And we can apply this to many things, but we should apply it to specifically the teaching of his parables. And then verse 23, Jesus says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. This word hear means to listen. Stop what I'm doing, because we know we can only listen to one thing at a time. To listen. It also means to understand. To not only think about it, but to put that truth in our hearts, and that it's something that changes our lives. The parable of the sower that we've just heard, if we hear, understand, and listen, it's a powerful truth in sharing the gospel. The emphasis of this parable is on the ground. The hard ground, the shallow ground, the divided ground, and the fruitful ground. The person we are witnessing to. And I believe as we are sharing the gospel, you can have an effect on this ground by showing love to the person you are sharing with, plowing that ground to make it softer by caring for that person and helping them. One of my favorite sayings is, no one cares what you know until they know that you care. When you show someone you care, when they know you want the best for them and are really there to help them, it changes the ground you're seeding on and gives a much better chance of that ground bearing fruit. I've seen it so many times when we do prison ministry that the hardest prisoner, the one that's gone through unspeakable abuse and an incredibly hard life, 
when you show them consistent love, their heart breaks and they begin weeping and then the seed you are sowing can bear fruit. Jesus says, if you have ears, hear. This is important. Don't miss this. You need to understand. And you could say he, everything Jesus said was important, but he's speaking specifically about the parables that he taught and that he was going to teach. And then it seems Jesus switches topics, but does he really? Because remember what's coming after this text, another parable. Verse 24 and 25, And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, for him shall be taken even that which he hath. Not just to listen, but be careful what you listen to. And it's crucial that we take this in context of the whole chapter. Jesus is speaking about different reactions people have upon hearing his teaching. Mark 4, 21 to 34 gives further detail about the spread of the gospel. The more here isn't added power or influence or material possessions, it's spiritual wisdom. And often we take verse 24 as how we judge others, but that verse actually doesn't have the word others or other people in it. It's how we measure. Jesus is saying if we approach his teaching as if we were carrying a big basket, we measure a big basket. Our basket is filled with understanding and enlightenment. Jesus' disciples show they want to have this big basket. They're measuring for themselves when they stay to learn when the miracles are over and they ask for insight into the parables. See, we have a lot of choice and control over our Christian life. Matthew 7, 1 to 5 explains how we judge others will influence how they judge us. Luke 6, 37 and 38 says how we forgive and give will be how others forgive us and is given to us. And it's the same with spiritual knowledge. Knowledge of the kingdom of God increases and decreases as we measure our basket. If I bring a big basket to be filled with knowledge, it's filled with overflowing. But if I bring a small one, it may be filled initially, but then lost according to Mark 4.25. Our measure, the size of our basket, consists of our time, attention, and submission to Jesus' words. So things like personal devotions, regular church attendance, and intentional application of the scriptures in our lives are part of making our basket bigger. The more we ask for, the more the Holy Spirit will work in our lives, above and beyond the details of what we have learned. It's our choice to ask for wisdom. Matthew 7, 7 to 11 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? It's our choice to decide how much wisdom we'll ask. That's found in our text in verse 33. And God will honor our request. James 1.5 says, If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So if you are asking God for wisdom, are you bringing a big container, a big basket for all your wisdom? God wants to give you wisdom much more than you now have. But you need to ask and you need to bring the container. And I think a lot of us forget the container. We ask for wisdom, but the container of personal devotions, prayer time, church attendance, fellowship with other Christians is measured very small. Maybe, my friend, it's time to enlarge your container by taking these things seriously. My name is Wes Hepner. You've been listening to the Gospel Message Radio Ministry. Our address is the Gospel Message, Box 1760, Warman, Saskatchewan, Canada, SOK, 4SO. Our phone number is 306-230-7807. Our website is Gospel Message radio.com. Thanks for listening. I wish you a blessed week.